there you are, Rafal. I've been looking for you. You. What do you need? Nothing. I just wanted to express my gratitude. I haven't had the chance to do it properly. So, thank you for coming to the Somniel. I'm grateful that you've joined us. I promised that we would meet again if my sister were to wake and forgive me. To go back on my word would be an insult to that miraculous gift. Thus, I am here. The price for my allegiance has already been paid. There is no need for thanks. Even so, your continued support means a lot to me. I can thank you for that, at least. <sighs> you are a strange one. It is absurd for you to trust me at all after what I have done. To be friendly is beyond the pale. What if I just want you to be happy after all we've been through? Would that be so wrong? It's not like I could have let things end with you and Nell at odds. That would break my heart. Deep down, I know you're a good person. And I happen to like you. You... like me? Is that truly what people say? Why not? What's wrong with it? Enough! Do you have no duties of your own to attend to? Leave me be. Hey, wait a second! Great weather we're having today, wouldn't you say, Rafal? Perfect for a long walk. You. Did you retain nothing of what I said? Did I not tell you to leave me be? I remember. But I have so much I want to talk to you about that I couldn't possibly stay away. Uh, you could at least sound less pleased with yourself about it. The tone is not endearing. Very well then, out with it. What is it you wished to discuss? I was going to ask you about all your likes and dislikes, but if I have to pick just one topic, I'd like to know how you spent your time while you were waiting for Nell to wake up. There is little to know. I waited, alone. If you insist on details, I held her hand, and I prayed continually that she would wake. I prayed for another opportunity to be a brother to her. A proper one this time. I wanted the chance to make her happy. And above all, I wanted her to know my true name. I see. Beyond that, my thoughts were simple. If she does not wake today, then perhaps tomorrow. Before I knew it, a thousand years had passed. My mother's experience must have been similar. The time was nothing to me. The days prior to her awakening were an insignificant blur. But I will never forget the smile she gave me on the day she finally woke. At any rate, that is all there is to tell. She woke, we came here, and you know the rest. You say that like waiting a thousand years was trivial. It wasn't. Not just anyone could do that. Your praise is uncalled for. My motivations were entirely selfish, I assure you. All the same, I do not think I would have done it if not for what you said before we parted ways. In that regard, you are as responsible for Nell's return as I am. And you have my thanks. <laughs> you sounded a bit like Nell just then. You might say, the resemblance between you is almost familial at this point. After all that, you mock me. This conversation was a mistake. No, Rafal, I didn't mean to... Enough of this prattle. Goodbye. You, take these. Huh? What's this? A bundle of... Oh, there are sweets inside. The kitchen staff held me hostage until I made these confections. I did what had to be done. You made these from scratch. For me, they look wonderful, Rafal. Thank you so much. Do you mind if I have some now? Do as you like, though there is something you should know. The treats come in two varieties. One is quite ordinary, while the other is, uh, special flavor. I'll admit, I'm curious. But I think I'll save the special kind for last. Let's try a regular one. <coughs> sweet! Too sweet! Oh, it burns! Oh, is it supposed to burn? Oh, 
you call that ordinary flavor? <laughs> this whole endeavor was worth it for the look on your face alone. I should have clarified. I meant ordinary for me. Any less sweet than that and I'd taste nothing. I shudder to think what your idea of a special flavor is. I don't know if I have it in me. If the fear is too much to bear, you can simply give them away. Or discard them altogether. <laughs> you know better than to suggest that. Okay, you've convinced me. Here goes nothing. Oh. Oh, wow. This one's amazing. It's all my favorite flavors combined in perfect balance. With your sensitive palate in mind, I used an exceptionally small amount of each flavoring. So that's what you meant by special. I would encourage you to savor these treats, because they are the last I will ever produce. Not that I regret the effort spent. As folk here say, actions are stronger gratitude than words. It's been an incredible experience, thank you. I can tell you put your heart into making them. There's just one problem, Rafal. What is that? How am I supposed to find room in my stomach for dinner? <laughs> Walk it off, Divine One. Thanks for giving me a hand with the supplies. I couldn't have done all that without you. I had some spare time. Think nothing of it. It wasn't nothing, though. You did almost all the heavy lifting. I should make it up to you. Oh, I know! How about I brew you a nice cup of tea later? Your gentle demeanor perplexes me. How can you be so caring in the middle of a bitter war? I was shocked to learn that you are a fell dragon in this world. If you had been born one of my siblings, your disposition would have led you to a quick death. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. These are not my feelings. These are facts. You are helpful to a fault, heedless of your own burdens, and recklessly curious. In short, a fool. You seem to kind of enjoy spending your time around fools lately. You journeyed from another world to risk your life for a fool. Who's very grateful, incidentally. <sighs> Say what you like. I will. Because even if you'd never admit it, I know that you listen and you care. I see that clearly now. <laughs> but you said actions express gratitude better than words, Rafal, and you were right. I've been thinking about it for a while now, and I've decided I want you to have this. <laughs> is that what I think it is? It's the Pact Ring, a symbol of a deep and special bond, a partnership. I may possess superficial charm, but giving this to me would be foolish even by your standard. Moreover, it would be wrong. I have done nothing to earn such an honor. Any partner of yours should be more pure. I'm a fell dragon just like you, remember? You said so yourself. I fought on Sombron's side once too. I'm every bit as impure as you are. Even so... You're the one I want to give this to, Rafal. You and nobody else. You're already an indispensable part of my life. I'm only asking you to continue to be that. <sighs> when you put it that way, it seems I have little choice. Who else will keep an eye on you? Very well. You have my word. I will remain by your side, fighting for your cause, until the end. Even if the rest of the world should turn against you, I will be here. I swear it. Thank you. That means a great deal to me. I will only say this once, so mark me well. You said that you wanted me to be happy. When I first came here, I was content merely to embark upon a new life, as a new person. But the more time I spend with you, the more I... miss you when you are absent. So, in return for my oath, I would like you to swear something to me. Swear that you will never leave my side. That we will explore what the future holds together. You. A little more. Your attention, please. 
Huh? Oh, hey, Lord Rafal. You seem a little out of sorts. Anything I can do to help? Cease your sweaty grunting at once. It is disruptive to my peace of mind. Sure, uh, I don't mind training a little more quietly. Sorry about that. That is insufficient. I demand that you stop it altogether. The mere sight of it disrupts me. I can't just stop working out, but I'm sure we can find a compromise. Hmm, let me think. Hey, I know! Why don't you join me? I beg your pardon? If we train together, the noise of it won't bother you at all! Come on, it'll be fun! I have neither the time nor the patience to endure this pointless farce. Everyone says stuff like that at first. Give it a chance, though. With me as your personal trainer, you'll definitely come around. Every moment spent talking to you is a waste. If you intend to stay, then I will go. At speed. Come on, Lord Rafal. Oh, wow, he's got great form. <laughs> what a powerful stride. Uh, hey, wait for me. Uh, I'm up for a run, too. <sighs> what is wrong with this man? What are you doing? Stop following me. <sighs> You're an amazing runner, you know? A real natural. I've upped my running game since last time, and I still can't keep up with you. I am a dragon. No mere human can match me. I exceed you without effort. All of your toil is fruitless. If you were wise, you would give up. Sorry, Lord Rafal, but I just can't agree with you there. My workouts aren't pointless. My body is living proof of that. What do you mean? When I was young, I was fragile and weak. No one thought I'd live a long life. But when my father got sick and died, I swore I'd fight for my own health as hard as I could. For my mother and sister's sake, I worked to make this body strong enough for anything. For your sister's sake, you say? I've been working out constantly ever since, and the results speak for themselves. I wouldn't be able to keep up with you and the Divine Dragon in battle if I didn't work for it. I understand. It seems I owe you an apology for my harsh condemnation of your exercise. Wow, you really mean that? <laughs> I knew you'd come around. It was only a matter of time until you got on board with working out. Slow down. I said no such thing. I have, however, grown weary of running. Perhaps it is time I tried something new. If you can recommend a form of exercise that will actually hold my interest, I may partake. Nothing to it, Lord Rafal. I've got you covered. <sighs> See if you can withstand this! Good, but not good enough. <sighs> your lance hit my neck, mine hit your chest. Let's call that a draw. Unacceptable. You would be the clear victor if you had used your dominant hand. Maybe, but I'm way more used to lances than you are. I think a draw's fair. Very well. But let us have another go after our break, now that I have the measure of you. Sounds good. Hey, can I ask you something? Speak freely. You seem like you're actually enjoying training lately. Any particular reason? I lay the blame for that at your feet. Me? Why? Your past reminded me of my own. I, too, was weak in my youth, always falling behind. Ashamed to rely on others for protection, I began a lifelong pursuit of strength. That does sound kind of like me, yeah. Our paths began in the same way, but mine diverged significantly. My thirst for power grew so strong that I was willing to hurt anyone to gain more. Strength without compassion is worse than useless. I see that now, in part thanks to you. My heart is no match for yours. But perhaps, with training, I can protect those I care about. You can and you will. I'm sure of it. Allow me to ask you something in return. Why do you spend time with me? Firene worships the Divine Dragon, and you are its prince. You should despise a fell dragon. I don't like to label people that way. I'd rather go by what I see. When I look at you, I see a good guy. You like working out now, so how bad could you be? Besides, we're cut from the same cloth. I kind of think of you like a brother. A much older brother, surely. But the point is well taken. 
Actually, I was thinking of myself as the older one, since I've got more experience in training. Ridiculous. A gulf of years lies between us that you can scarcely fathom. Why don't we settle it with a rematch? Winner gets to be the big brother. <laughs> you will regret proposing such a wager, little brother. <laughs> Bring it on. You. <sighs> Ivy. I have something to say to you. I have come to apologize for turning you into one of the corrupted. I might accept your apology, Lord Rafal, if I had any notion of what you were referring to. It was my intention to lead with the worst of it, and to follow with an explanation. You are quite unlike the Ivy I knew in my world. I am accustomed to her constant interruptions. If you need a moment, please take your time. Thank you. <clears throat> I turned the Ivy of my world into one of the corrupted and forced her to fight. I took advantage of her willingness. She was all too devoted to the Fell Dragon, eager to serve. But I did the same to all of the royals soon after, willing or not. I deeply regret my actions. Thank you for explaining, but I fail to see what any of this has to do with me. You have apologized to the wrong Ivy, and unnerved this one a fair bit, to be candid. It is no longer possible for me to speak with the person I hurt. I am afraid this is all I can do. I suppose I thought I could reach her through you, but perhaps it is peace of mind I am after. I think I understand how you feel, but I still don't see how I could possibly help you. All I require you to do is allow me to make some amends for the damage I have done. What do these amends entail? Anything you would like. Make a wish, and I will see it done. Very well. If you insist, I will think of something. I will be waiting. You approach me at last. I take this to mean you have decided on a wish? Indeed I have. My wish, to put it simply, is to return to the Academy. Of course, the Academy. That stands to reason. Now, what is that exactly? You don't know what the Academy is? Oh, I had better think of another wish. Nonsense. You need only paint me a picture with your words, and I will conjure it into being. If you say so. The Academy is Elugia's Institute of Higher Education. All gather there to learn. Our people are required to attend from a certain age. Groups of peers are formed into classes. So your wish is to be placed into a class and to study? Is that truly all you want? Yes. But the Academy is more than the sum of its parts. My time there meant a great deal. I would not trade the treasures I discovered in those halls for anything in the world. Excellent. Tell me of these treasures, and I will secure more of them for you immediately. The treasures are the memories I made with my friends at the Academy, Lord Rafal. Naturally. That will be complicated to replicate, of course. We can begin with initial conditions. Your plan is to... Recreate the Academy? How? Surely you don't mean to repurpose a school from elsewhere. I will not condone pillaging. Of course not. I would never do such a thing. You need not worry. Merely anticipate. Indeed. Very well. I will take you at your word. Farewell for now, Lord Rafal. Now what? How am I supposed to recreate an Academy? I will need to do some research. That will be all for today. Next week, I will have a history lesson prepared for us. I will admit, I am surprised we have kept this up for so many lessons over so long a time. I never thought I'd be able to fully immerse myself into my studies again. It's been lovely. Of course it has. I will settle for nothing less. I only wish I could have built a schoolhouse. Oh, that's not necessary. This is more than enough. Tell me about your friends at the Academy. Were they all royals and other nobles? Some were. But the students came from all backgrounds and walks of life. Many of the friends I made there I would never have made at court. Or anywhere else. Those unexpected connections are another reason the Academy is special to me. 
Rather like the connection you and I have forged since we started this venture. Precisely, Lord Rafal. Your work here has given us a wonderful example of exactly that. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. If my efforts have brought you some measure of happiness, then I am satisfied. The Ivy and the world I come from must have had similar experiences at her academy. When I think of all the friendships she must have forged, and the effects of my actions... I cannot forgive you on her behalf. But, for whatever it's worth, I think learning your lesson and applying it here in this world is the most you could hope to do. You are right. My sins are unforgivable, and I will carry that burden for the rest of my life. But I have learned my lesson, thanks to your academy. <laughs> Institute of Higher Education, indeed. Well remembered. You know, Lord Rafal, you and I have studied together for quite a while by now. I don't think it would be inappropriate for us to think of one another as... schoolmates. Is that the term you use for an academy, friend? I do not know if I have earned this distinction. Come now. We've spent all this time learning together. It could hardly be any more fitting. I dare say there's no better descriptor for our relationship as it stands. Surely none I'd prefer. If that is your desire, then it cannot be wrong. Your wish is what began this endeavor, after all. Then let us consider one another's schoolmates until the end of time. Even after... graduation. Another treasured memory that I will happily add to my collection. There. Now all that remains is to pack these up and put them away. Greetings. Do you require any assistance? Thank you, Lord Rafal, but no. The tools are now neatly organized. You are planning to sort the weapons next, are you not? Perhaps I can assist with that. You need not trouble yourself. It seems you have something on your mind. Can I assist you somehow? I can see that my efforts to be considerate have come to naught. No need to rub it in. Not at all. You are still new to this world. If I can ease the transition in any way, I will. I do not require anything at the moment. Good. If that changes, I assume you know how to find me. I would extend to you the same offer. I know you have a tendency to overwork yourself. Try to rest now and again. Thank you for your concern. <sighs> Three more trips should suffice. Hauling crates, are we? Allow me to help you. The sentiment is appreciated, Lord Rafal, but that is entirely unnecessary. Whatever you think of my appearance, I possess more than adequate strength for this task. I am aware of that. Why do you seem so eager to be of assistance to me? Are my efforts to help you a nuisance? No, but they are somewhat perplexing. Perhaps if you explained the reasoning behind them, I would be more inclined to accept. <sighs> this appears to be difficult for you. I will not force the issue. When you feel inclined to explain, I will be ready to listen. For now, I will return to my work. Ah, uh, I should have expected he would notice. I must decide how much to tell him. It is not an easy decision. But I ought to be certain how I feel before I speak with him again. Mavier, speak with me for a moment. Very well. What about? Our conversation the other day. There is something you should know. Is this about why you have been so eager to be of assistance to me? Yes. There was a man by the name of Mavier in my world, who greatly resembled you. I caused that man's death. So... This is a matter of atonement. That is not what I... <sighs> Perhaps you have a point. This guilt I feel is a heavy burden. I am not the person you hurt, Lord Rafal. No matter how much I may remind you of him. Regardless of your feelings, I am in no position to accept an apology or to offer forgiveness. <sighs> that is true enough. To you, my account is no more than the tale of a complete stranger. Precisely. Anything I might offer you would ultimately ring hollow. You should focus your efforts elsewhere. Wise words. 
No amends I make to you will counteract the evil I have done at all. My paltry overtures have been nothing but a childish attempt to soothe my own ego. If it is any consolation, I understand how you feel all too well. I also have a great deal for which to atone. I hope that you are able to do so. Neither of us can alter the past. The best we can do is improve the future. If we can make the world better than it was before we damaged it, that will be a start. You set a fine example. Perhaps following it will ease my burden. If that is the case, I will be glad for it. Now, I have more crates to haul. Would you mind lending me a hand? Certainly. Well, if it isn't Lord Rafal! What a coincidence, running into you in this great wide Somniel. <sighs> Whoa, what's with the silent treatment? We've always been such good allies. Ah, yes, now I recall. You are one of those mewling four winds wretches. Uh, that sharp gaze, the cruel words. You're nothing at all like when you were Lord Nil. If your lungs enjoy the air, Gregory, you will not permit them to breathe that name again. I guess I was right then. Before, when you were being nice to us, that was all an act, wasn't it? Of course it was an act. Is your weak mind so easily soothed by empty platitudes? Oh, Gregory, I missed you so. The sight of you fills my heart with joy. Ouch, you don't have to be so mean. Words hurt as bad as blades, you know. Then state your business and cease to waste my time. What brings you to me now? Revenge? What? No, I'm not like that at all. I don't believe in revenge. I don't have any particular business with you. Then be gone. You are of no further use to me. Fine, fine. Not like I actually want to be used by you again. I did have one question for you, though. You're cruel. But it feels like a mask, just like your kindness did. So... Who is the real you? Your naivete is staggering. Why, Lord Rafal, today must be my lucky day. Isn't the weather great? I could take a nap right here. If it wasn't the middle of a battlefield. Your enthusiasm is bewildering. And your overtures of friendship are misplaced. Who says I'm trying to be your friend? Maybe the Divine Dragon wants me to chaperone you. You... chaperone me? Huh. I mean, why not? You may be powerful, but you have the habit of letting that get to your head. Maybe having a cool, intellectual type like me by your side will help balance you out. When I require the services of a spineless, sniveling coward, I will be sure to... <clears throat> Look out! <sighs> what the... You always have to be wary of an ambush on the battlefield, Lord Rafal. Uh, how dare the corrupted loose an arrow in my direction! It's rather shocking, but given that I just saved your life, I'd say you need me as a chaperone. Do not patronize me. I am more than capable of fighting this battle without your supervision. Sure you are. Never said you weren't. Uh, what is it? If it will help you wipe that look off your face, then by all means, spit it out. Nothing. Nothing at all. I was just thinking about how strong you are. Indeed, you would do well to remember that. My power will be what decides this battle. And it will do so far more effectively if you keep quiet and out of the way. As great as it sounds to just stand aside and avoid all conflict, if I stop watching you and you get killed, I could never look the Divine Dragon in the eye again. <sighs> if you insist, then so be it. But mind your place and keep up, lest you be left behind. But of course, I will do as you say, my former master. I had my doubts at first, but I'd say we make a pretty good team. You have done well. What? A compliment? Did you actually just say I did well? Too well. What is your aim in fighting alongside me? What are you trying to achieve? Do you recall nothing of how I played you for a fool? The life that was lost because of it? 
Of course I remember. Surely you are harboring resentment, or fear at the very least, that I may turn on you again. Oh, believe me. I used to resent and hate you with all my heart. Still do, if I'm being honest. But that anger? It's not directed entirely toward you. What is that supposed to mean? Well, I never realized you had a secret. I didn't even realize how much you were suffering. I'm more angry at myself for being so useless. I wasn't able to help you. To... To rescue you. Is that so? That's why I'm trying so hard to understand you in this world. Huh. You truly believe you can fathom my mind? Maybe. Maybe not. But even if I fail in that and you betray us again, I won't fail in ending you. So it doesn't matter how cruel or nice you are to me. I don't plan on leaving your side. So open about your plans. Why should I keep my would-be murderer close to my side? Because the Divine Dragon wants me to be your chaperone? Seems like a good enough reason. Oh, very well. Serve me with your backstabbing blade near to hand if that is what pleases you. So long as you are aware that the only back such a blade will find is your own. <laughs> are you truly amused by your own weakness? Oh, I was just thinking that, based on what I've seen, we don't need to worry too much. The way you feel obligated and try to push me away, your inability to honestly express thanks, you try to hide it, but I see you, and I doubt you'll betray us again. Probably. No, definitely. Comfort yourself with whatever delusions you prefer. None of this matters to me. Is that so? Then why are your ears turning red? <sighs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> I think I like you better when you're this easy to read. I won't be fooled by the mask you try to wear. Not when I've finally seen your true face. Sister? Something has upset you, Rafal. What is it? Is it not obvious? Already you are throwing yourself to the front lines. You have not yet fully recovered. Allow me to fight at the front instead. Your concern is appreciated. But with the Dragonstone you gave me, it is unfounded. My ability to transform is no less than it was prior to the shattering of my own stone. That is true enough. Moreover, as you know, my new stone was empowered directly by the emblems. It is a piece of that which imparted to you your own power to transform. Yes. We were fortunate that the Dragonstone yielded by the emblems was exceptionally large. That is why I was able to split the stone into four pieces and give two of them to you. I was initially concerned that the split would reduce potency, but that has not been the case. Indeed. So there is no reason for you to be concerned about me. I will accept that. If you promise to call upon me the moment you are in danger. Thank you. Should such a moment come, I will do so. And I will be there. Rafal? Yes? I am concerned about your wound. You were reckless about protecting me in the last battle. One misstep and that cut could have been fatal. Is it healing properly at least? It is, thank you. And yes, I am told that if the slash were slightly to the right, I would be dead. I was healed with a staff, but evidently there will be permanent scarring nevertheless. This is entirely my fault. A scar is a small price to pay for the opportunity to protect you. I would do it again. Please refrain. I beg of you. You cannot possibly think that I would be pleased to see you sacrifice your life, do you? No, I do not. Even so, I cannot bear the thought of you being hurt again. I understand how you feel, but I do not understand why you must be so... <clears throat> I watched over you for a thousand years after you sacrificed yourself for my sake. I spent every waking moment of that time keenly aware of the depths of my foolishness. A fear that you would never wake held me constantly in its grasp. It nearly drove me mad. Rafal. Hear me. I will do anything not to lose you again. Protecting you is all I care about. Whatever may become of me, I am prepared to accept. And if you truly understand how I feel, that is all I need say. Now, 
I will take my leave. Wait, please, listen. <sighs> How can I make you understand? I see that your injuries have been treated. Good. You have been waiting all the while. I apologize for taking up so much of your time. The time is irrelevant. That hit, on the other hand, was meant for me. And you stole it. I said I would protect you no matter what becomes of me. Do my words mean so little? If your aim is to trample my heart, then so be it. But do not make yourself a martyr. <laughs> the shoe appears to have found its way to the other foot. No! I understand you are angry. But now you will hear me. The thousand years you spent in Watch passed me by in an instant. In our native world, we were never truly twins. One might say it is because we could not be twins that we fought against each other. What is your point? Now, in this world, everything has changed. We share a Dragonstone. Do you not see? That makes us true and equal halves of a whole. And if that is so, then your protection of me cannot be one-sided. <sighs> if your wish is to protect me, and not to be protected in turn, then we will never be equal. If we are two halves of a whole, then I must protect you as well. Your pain is my pain, and your joy is my joy, and your fear and your hardship are mine also. So do not tell me ever again that what becomes of you is irrelevant. <sighs> you are absolutely right. Please, pardon me for my arrogance. I have allowed my fear of losing you to govern my entire relationship with you. That is wrong. We are indeed equals. Halves of a whole. I beg you, forgive my impudence. There is nothing to forgive. All that you have said and done has been out of love. How is your wound? Tell me truly. It is likely to remain with me forever. Yours? The same. For the rest of my life. <laughs> Twins with matching scars. And no need to be so happy about it. On the contrary. This scar is proof that I have been a shield for my brother. <laughs> you are impossible. There is no competing with you. A laugh now. And a smile as well. This day will live forever in my memory. A smile? Never. You must have imagined it. You cannot fool me, Rafal. It is impossible. Why? Because we are two halves of a whole? Precisely. My mind is your mind, I suppose. Let it always be so, dear sister. Indeed.